On a beautiful summer morning, a little tailor sat on a bench by the window, intently sewing, looking very happy. Suddenly a farmer passed through the street hawking. This is delicious apple jam. This is delicious apple jam. The sound of the announcement was so pleasing to the ears, the tailor stuck his head out the window and called, Come here, Ma and number 39. M, you and number 39. Re probably sold out here. She carried the heavy basket and climbed up the three steps to where the tailor sat. She showed him all kinds of jam. Looking at one jar after another, he lifted it up to his nose and smelled it, got bored and said, The jam smells delicious, please weigh four lots for me. If I overweigh it, it will be a quarter and a half kilo. That and number 39, s okay. Give the goods to the customer immediately. She was very upset, muttering and cursing as she walked because she thought she had caught a good customer. The tailor held jam in his hand and shouted, God bless, I hope you eat this jam and stay healthy. Then he opened the cupboard, took out bread, cut a piece and spread jam on it. He said, it and number 39. S probably delicious, but I have to finish sewing these pants first and then take a bite to try. He put the cake aside and continued sewing, but because of his enthusiasm, the stitches became longer and longer. While he was busy working, the flies on the wall smelled the fragrant jam, and they flocked down. Looking back and seeing flies landing on the cake, the tailor said, Hey, who invited you? Then he had to chase away the uninvited guests. But the flies didn't and hash 39. T understand German. Not only did they not fly away, but they also came in larger numbers than before. Angry, the tailor reached out and took a piece of leather, mercilessly swishing at the flies, scolding as he lashed out. Wait. I and number 39. LL show you what to do. After beating, he sat down to count. Seven dead flies with legs stretched out and stiffly lying in front of him. Conceited about his unexpected heroism, he said, How about those boys? Do you know how to do it? We must let the whole province know about this. He quickly sewed a belt and embroidered on it large words. And quat. One blow kills seven. And quat. Then he added, Why only the whole province? This must be made known to the whole world. His heart was fluttering and excited. He put on his belt and planned to travel the world. He thought to himself, Hanging around this humble tailor shop would be a waste of my heroism. Before leaving, he rummaged around the house to see what else he could take with him on the journey. He searched and searched but only found a piece of cheese that had been sitting for a long time, so he immediately stuffed it into his pocket. Just as he reached the gate, he saw a bird stuck in the bushes. He caught it and put the bird in his pocket along with the cheese. He eagerly set out, walking briskly. Due to his petite personality, he never gets tired of walking. Road leading to a mountain. Just reaching the top of the mountain, he saw a giant sitting leisurely looking around. The tailor calmly continued to say hello. Hello friend, who let you sit here just to look at the vast world? I and number 39, am currently on my way to travel the world. Do you want to travel with me? The giant looked at the tailor contemptuously and said, You brat, you bastard. The tailor replied, How is that? Then he unbuttoned his shirt, showed the giant his belt and said, Just read this and you will know what kind of person you are. The giant read, End quat. One. Blow kills seven, end quat. So he thought, 
Seven people died from just one blow. So he felt respect for the little tailor. But then the giant still wanted to try his hand at the tailor. He picked up a stone, then held his hand and squeezed the stone to release water and said, If you are strong, try squeezing it for me. The tailor replied, Is that all? As easy as a child and number 39, S. Toy. He reached into his pocket and took out the softened cheese. He held it in his hand and squeezed it until it melted and said, See, is it any better? The giant didn't and hash 39. T know what to say, he didn't and hash 39. T expect such a small person to be so strong. He picked up a stone, waved his hand and threw it so high that we could no longer see a trace of the stone. Then the giant said, Come on, little duck, try it. The tailor said, Nice throw. But the stone you throw will fall to the ground. The stone you throw will not fall to the ground. He reached into his pocket to get the bird, then tossed it into the air. The birds were so happy to be released, they immediately flew away. The tailor asks, How are you, my friend, are you satisfied? The giant replied, You can throw it. But let and number 39. S. C. if you and number 39. Re as good at carrying heavy loads as you are at throwing rocks? The giant led the tailor to an ancient oak tree lying across the path and said, If you are strong, help me carry this tree out of the forest. The little tailor replied, Okay. You just carry the tree trunk on your shoulder. I and number 39. LL lift the branch on my shoulder to carry. That and number 39. S much heavier. The giant carried the tree trunk on his shoulders, and the tailor sat perched on a branch. The giant was so heavy that he could N and hash 39. T turn his head to look back, so he didn't and hash 39. T know that he had to carry the entire tree but also the tailor sitting on top of it. The tailor sitting behind was delighted. His heart was as happy as a party. He whistled the song. And quat. There were three tailors riding horses out of the city gate. And quat. He acted as if carrying an old tree was just child and number 39. S. Play. The old tree was so heavy that the giant felt tired after carrying it only a short distance. He stopped and said, Hey buddy, be careful. I dropped the tree here. The tailor immediately said, You can only get the big one, if you can and number 39. T carry this tree, it and number 39. S too heavy. The two continued their journey together. Passing by a cherry tree, the giant grabbed the top of the tree with many ripe fruits and told the tailor to keep picking and eat. But how could the small tailor hold the top of the tree that was bending down? As soon as the giant let go, the treetop bounced back, and the tailor was thrown into the air. Because he was small, the tailor fell without any scratches. The giant asked sarcastically, What a number 39? S. Wrong, friend, is there a bent branch that you can and number 39? T. Hold. The little tailor replied, Do you think I and number 39 am weak? Would someone who kills seven with one blow even want to do that? I jumped over the top of the tree because I saw a group of hunters aiming and shooting at the bushes where we were standing. If you are good then try dancing like me. The giant tried his best to jump but could not get over the top of the tree. Hanging suspended by the branches and leaves of the old tree, so the tailor won again. The giant said again, Hey, you are so brave and heroic. Come with me back to the cave, and sleep every other night with us. The tailor agreed to follow. When we arrived at the cave, we saw several. 
other giants sitting by the fire, each holding a dead sheep in their hand and eating it deliciously. The tailor looked around and thought, this place is more spacious than my shop. The giant pointed to a bed and told him to go to bed and get a good night and number 39's sleep. The giant and number 39's bed was too large, the little tailor slept right on the edge of a corner of the bed. At midnight, the giant thought that perhaps the tailor was asleep at this time, so he took a large iron bar and slammed it down on the bed thinking that this would finish off the annoying grasshopper. Early in the morning, the giants went into the forest and forgot all about the tailor. The giants were frightened when they suddenly saw the tailor with a cheerful face, walking straight towards them. They thought he was going to beat them all to death, so they jumped up and ran. The tailor continued walking, looking proud and proud. After walking for a while, he reached the royal garden. Only then did he feel tired, so he rolled over and took a nap on the grass. While he was sleeping soundly on the grass, a group of people passed by and saw a small person lying in the royal garden. They stopped and looked around. They read the words written on the uncle and number 39, S. Belt, and Quat. One blow kills seven, and quat, they said to each other. Wow! In the midst of such peace in the world, why did this tiger general appear here? Surely this is a general with the power to rival many people. They immediately went to report to the king. They thought that if there was a war, this person could be a tenacious warrior. A person like that should not be allowed to go somewhere else. Wait until the tailor woke up and said. The king wanted to help his country during the war. The messenger arrived but waited until the tailor stretched his arms and opened his eyes. Then he clearly stated the king and number 39's intentions. The tailor replied, just for that reason I came here. I am ready to serve the king. He was welcomed solemnly and placed in a special private place. The generals in the court were visibly upset. They hoped that the new and quat, brave and quat, would go to the frontier thousands of miles away. They talked to each other, playing with it is dangerous, because it only takes one hit to kill seven. At that time, none of us would have survived. They decided to go together to see the king to ask to be dismissed and go home. They said in unison, Your Majesty, my subordinates cannot be with someone who can kill them with one blow. The king was sad, seeing that just because he wanted to keep one person, all his loyal servants would stay away from him. At this time, the king wished that he had never met the tailor and wanted to get rid of him immediately. But the king did not dare to say anything, afraid that the Inquat, brave Inquat, would kill him and that he would not be able to kill all the people and then ascend the throne himself. The king thought and thought again and again before coming up with a plan. The king sent an envoy to tell him that if he was indeed a majestic soldier, he should do something to save the people to help the king. In a domestic forest, there lived two giants who lived by robbing, killing people, and burning houses. They commit countless crimes. Because they were afraid of their lives, no one dared to go near that forest. If the warrior kills those two giants, the king will marry his only daughter and half of the country as a dowry. To eliminate the two giants, the king sent a hundred knights to help. The tailor thought to himself, that and number 39, s worthy of someone like me. Marrying a beautiful princess as your wife and sharing half of a country is a rare thing in the world, not a joke. Thinking so, he immediately replied, 
Oh my! I will tie up those two giants. If one person kills seven with one blow, there is no reason to fear two, nor do I need a hundred knights. The tailor left, followed by a hundred horsemen. At the forest gate, he told the knights, Everyone, just wait here, I will take care of those two giants alone. He went straight into the forest, looking sideways as he walked. After walking for a while, he saw two giants sleeping at the base of a tree, snoring so hard that the tree branches swayed. Not wasting any time, the tailor picked up two bags full of stones and climbed up the tree. Climbing halfway up the tree, he crawled out onto a branch and sat directly above the heads of the two sleeping men. Then he threw a stone straight into the chest of one of the two giants, throwing it continuously, one stone after another. At first, no one moved, but then he woke up, nudged his friend with his elbow and asked, What did you mean when you hit me? The other guy replied, Are you dreaming? I didn't and hash 39, T hit you. Then they slept again. As he started to fall asleep, the second guy was kicked and thrown. This guy said, So what, why did you throw me? The other guy answered and grumbled, I didn't and hash 39, T throw you. After only arguing for a while, they had to make up because they were both still tired and their eyes were closed due to sleepiness. They fell asleep. The tailor continued that joke. He chose the biggest stone, took it and threw it straight into the first guy and number 39's chest. This guy shouted loudly, This is too much. Enraged, he jumped up and pushed you against the tree so hard that the whole tree shook. The other guy retaliated equally, then both got angry, uprooted the tree, twisted the branches and fought each other. They fought each other hard, as a result they both fell dead. Only then did the small tailor jump down in surprise. He said, luckily they didn't and hash 39. T uproot the tree I was sitting in, otherwise I would have had to jump quickly to another tree like a squirrel. But the good thing is that I and number 39, am small, so I and number 39, am quick. He pulled out his sword and stabbed each man in the chest with the sword. Then he went out to the forest and said to the knights, The work is finished. I ended the lives of those two men, but it was difficult. Caught in a difficult position, they uprooted trees to fight back, but that didn't and hash 39. T help when the opponent was someone like me, who only took one hit but died seven times. The knight said, so the hero is not injured? He replied, everything is going smoothly, so how can it touch my pores? The cavalry did not believe him, so they rode into the forest and saw two giants lying in a pool of blood, surrounded by uprooted trees. The tailor demanded that the king reward him with the things the king promised. But the king regretted his promise and thought about finding a new plan to harm the tailor. The king told his uncle, Before you can marry my daughter and half of this country, you must do one more heroic thing. You trap the unicorn that is destroying the forest and bring it here for me. Two giants are not even afraid. What a number 39. S the point of a unicorn. If God strikes, he only takes one blow but kills seven. He brought a rope and an axe and set out with a group. Of helpers. When he got there, he told his followers to wait at the edge of the forest. I went straight into the deep forest. He didn't and hash 39, T have to look for anything to see the animal coming straight towards him. It rushed straight forward and tried to knock him up. He said, come on, please, what are you doing so quickly? 
It seemed like the animal could hit him, but in an instant he jumped behind the tree. The unicorn kept going straight into the tree trunk. Its horn stuck deep into the tree trunk. The unicorn could not pull itself out. It was stuck there. The tailor said, Now there and number 39, est no way to run. From behind the tree he went out, took a rope and lassoed the unicorn and number 39. S neck. Then he used an axe to carve the tree trunk and remove the horn. Having finished everything, he dragged the animal behind him and presented it to the king. But then the king still refused to fulfill his promise, demanding that he do a third thing. Before marrying, the tailor must catch for the king the ferocious wild boar that is raging and destroying the king and number 39's forest. The king sent hunters to support him. Yes, I and number 39 am ready. That and number 39's just a child and number 39's game. I don and number 39 T. Bring hunters into the forest. The hunters were secretly happy because they had struggled many times because of that wild boar. As soon as he saw the tailor, the wild boar foamed at the mouth, raised his fangs, and then rushed straight at the tailor. But the tailor was very quick, he ran straight into the door of the nearby church. By the time the wild boar turned around the chaser and ran in, the tailor jumped out the window. He ran around and closed the door, so the pig was locked in the church. It struggled but could n and hash 39, t jump out. I could n and hash 39, t get through the window because it was too big and heavy. The tailor called the hunter so they could see the caged animal with their own eyes. Meanwhile, the good man came to meet the king. The king had to force himself to follow his promise. Marry the princess and divide half the country. If the king knew that standing before him was not a great hero but just a tailor, he would probably be very angry. The wedding ceremony was held lavishly, but somewhat less happily. The tailor suddenly became the king of the divided country. Not long after, one night, the young queen heard her husband say in a daze, Hey, cut me a shirt, sew me pants, hurry up and don, and number 39, T get slapped. Only then did she learn about her husband and number 39's family background. The next morning, she returned home, lamented her fate to her father, and asked him to take her husband away from her, who was just an ordinary tailor. The king comforted his daughter and said, Tonight when you go to bed, leave the door open, my servants will wait outside. When it falls asleep, they will rush in, tie it up, and carry it straight to the ship to a faraway island. After hearing that plan, the princess felt very reassured. The king and number 39's servant heard the whole story, and loved his son-in-law very much, so he immediately told him the whole plan. The son-in-law said, we have to stop first. That night, the tailor went to bed as usual. After a while, the princess thought her husband was asleep, so she gingerly got up opened the door, left it open, and went back to bed. In fact, the tailor just lay there, pretending to be asleep and talking loudly. Hey little guy, cut me this shirt and make me these pants. Hurry up so you don and number 39, T get slapped now. I have had glorious victories, I killed seven with just one blow, killed two giants, hunted a unicorn, and trapped a ferocious pig. If we can treat those things, what good will those brats hiding out there do? Hearing the voices coming from inside the room, the soldiers hiding outside became frightened. 
They ran as fast as they could as if they were chased closely by a herd of tigers. No one had the soul to think of harming the tailor. So the tailor kept the throne for life. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.